Hi everybody, big warm welcome to all of you. This is our bright spot uh, with Lenny Wright. Um, I thought it would be really nice to have a regular occasion when we could discuss healthy eating. Uh, this is uh, something that I'm very passionate about. I think as we age, it's really, really important that we're aware of our food and nutrition. And um, Lenny is an absolute expert in the whole area. I'm going to let her introduce herself briefly to you. I also want to remind you or tell you that on February the 16th at four o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to have a Zoom session with Lenny. So I'm going to be talking to her at some length about her philosophy, her approach to eating and the ways in which uh, eating has helped her from a health perspective. So over to Lenny now just to introduce herself to you and then we're going to chat while she creates uh, a recipe for us which I think is going to be really good fun. So, res uh, so Lenny just tell us about yourself. Well welcome Tricia to the Eat Right Kitchen and welcome Super Troopers and all you other ladies that are followers of Tricia. Uh, my name is Leonie Wright and the first thing I think you will detect is that I talk with an English accent or with a Dutch accent because I'm, I'm Dutch. I'm a, a nutrition coach and I am the founder of Eat Right which is a nutrition consultancy for women in Surrey. And my main task in life is to stop women from going on diets. So instead, I help them to make long lasting changes in their eating habits so that they first of all can be healthy, that they can look and feel great and be full of energy and finally never need to go on a diet again. So that's my passion. That sounds like the best news ever. <laughs> I love the idea of never to go on a diet again. So, um, and I totally, I totally agree with you there that uh, the day that I actually stopped dieting was the day that I started to feel better about myself, but also, um, you know, not to have concerns about putting on weight, um, which was obviously the obsession that I had with dieting. Okay, so uh, what are you going to show us today? Tell us, tell us about uh, the recipe for today. Well, because it's a bit cold and it's winter, I thought it would be lovely to make a lovely soup. So we've chosen today a red pepper and cauliflower soup. Um, it's very quick to make. It's full of vitamin, full of fiber and deliciously warming at, at this time of the year. That sounds absolutely brilliant. I think you're going to make some uh, linseed crackers. Is that yeah. right? I have, uh, I have to make the confession that I've made them beforehand, but I will explain to you how to make them. It is really simple, but it takes uh, a bit of time with putting it in the oven. So hence I thought I'll just explain to you. And also you can get the recipes uh, from me if you want. Yeah, that sounds absolutely brilliant. And anybody watching this and, and being inspired, if you make Lenny soup and her linseed crackers, then we're looking for your photographs and your, um, you know, your, your comments about uh, both of those things, uh, preferably on the Super Troopers Facebook group page. So, uh, you know, uh, we'd like to see the results of your efforts as well. So uh, over to you, Lenny. Um, do tell us what you're going to do. OK, so um, obviously, if it's cauliflower and red pepper soup, that are the main ingredients. So um, I recommend uh, it's a recipe for two people. So I'm using a cauliflower. This is a fairly small one, but if it's a larger one, just cut it in half. Uh, I'm using two red peppers, um, and I'll tell you why, because they're really, really healthy for you. Uh, I'm using an onion. I prefer to uh, use red onions because they're not so sharp, so they have a softer taste, and often they're easier to use in salads as well. Um, I'm using two cloves of garlic. I barely see them. Um, I'm using a stock cube, which I have made very fine with my fingers, but I'll explain to you why I've done it to save washing up that is, so hold on to that. Uh, I'm using Himalayan salt, black pepper, extra virgin olive oil, and to make stock uh, hot water as well. So that are the ingredients. Can I just uh, say Himalayan salt? So um, yeah. I was chatting to you uh, some while back and you told me about you know, salt and how important it was to use the right kind of salt that it was, you know, better for you. And um, I thought, oh God, you know, that sounds really weird. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be able to find that. And there it is, you know, there it is on the shelves in the supermarket. So I've been using it, it's pink, isn't it? I've been using pink Himalayan salt ever since. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's a good tip. Yeah, so it's not, it's not difficult to find. 
It is now readily available in supermarkets and health food stores. And why it is important to use Himalayan salt or Celtic salt is another one. It's that they are not, uh, they are not, uh, Himalayan salt especially has got 82 different trace minerals in there, which are very good for you. Normal table salt in, uh, has fillers in it, has got nasty ingredients in there that you don't really want to have because it can be causing toxicity in the body, which you want to avoid. So an Himalayan salt comes from the Himalayan mountains, which is very, very deep in the earth, used to be sea and is harvested in a proper way and barely processed. So it's one of the best salts you can add. So I'm really glad you're using that. Well done, Tricia. Treacherous <laughs> every time I, you know, grind my little, my little pot, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you how I start. Um, I start by cutting up the onion. So I'm just going to move uh, the laptop over to my chopping board so you can see what I'm doing. There's my chopping board. I hope that is a good view. Um, now, I've taken the skin of the onion. Normally that takes a bit of time, but so I've done that before. And actually the lady that taught me how to cut uh, onions was uh, Prue Leith, who you might know, a really, really good cook. Um, I never used to do it the way she did it, but I'll just show you. So you've taken the skin off and you cut the onion in half. And then you have in the onion, you can see here a little bit of a hard bit. So you put that down like that, uh, you hold your fingers like that so that you don't cut into the, uh, into the actual finger. You don't want to do that. So then you chop it in the length. And the advantage is that the onion is held together by that tough bit right on the top. So it makes it much easier to cut the onion, she said. <laughs> Right, and then I'm cutting it in just little pieces like that. You can put it in slices, that's, that's fine as well, um, because the soup will ultimately be blended or you can um, eat it as it is. So it's nice to have it in little bits. Um, I've just got a little bowl in here where I'm going to put it in. And do you know why onion is so good for you, Tricia? No, tell me. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's very good for your gut, for your digestive system, and it's also very good antiviral and antibacterial. So it's a, a vegetable that we really need at this time of the year when we need to boost our immune system with that horrible virus going around. So, um, and you're putting garlic in this as well. So you've got uh, two of those. Uh, what are they called, onions and, and garlic? They're called something, aren't they? Um, yes, and I, co I completely forgot now, but I'm sure that one of the ladies will know. Um, okay. this is a, yeah, sometimes there's a blank in my head. There's so much information in there. <laughs> well, join the club, Lenny. I absolutely feel like that. But, but both garlic, I mean, garlic is really good for you. It's, it's supposed to be really good for your blood, isn't it? I know. And, yeah, for your blood pressure and yeah. uh, also for uh, your heart. So I'm using two cloves. I've cut what I have done and what you might notice is that I'm not crushing it. A lot of people crush their garlic. If you do that, a lot of the liquid that's inside the garlic goes out. And it's best to keep that inside as much as possible because that's where the health benefits are. So I'm always chopping my garlic up in little pieces. Um, so if you want to take the skin off, what I suggest is you Press it with a knife like that, and then take the skin off. Should be easy. Can I also like that. say that uh, if you really want to be lazy, and I really want to be lazy when it comes <laughs> to cooking, you can buy easy garlic from uh, supermarkets, little pots of easy garlic. Yeah. And um, I have been known to buy that, and easy ginger, and um, and actually. They, they do a little tray in Mark's and Spencer's food, which has got garlic, ginger, and um, chili already, ah. chopped, already chopped up for you. Uh, so uh, if you want to be really, really, really lazy, then you could buy things like that. If you're short of time, it's a very good alternative. Um, it's, I think it's better than, because you also have garlic powder and onion powder. Yeah, no, um, I, which, I, you I don't buy that. that. No, I don't. I, I, I buy the real thing. But as I said, um, I, I'm lazy enough. Actually, I'm going to claim that I'm busy enough to be able to excuse that. 
That's a very good excuse, Tricia, and busy you are. So um, rather than cutting up everything at this particular moment, I thought I'll uh, start the onion and garlic off in the pan. So I'm just going to turn you around a little bit. I've tested all this out beforehand, but there's the pan. Right. So I'm turning the hop on uh, on a medium to low heat, like this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, the uh, extra virgin olive oil in. Now, many people are scared of using extra virgin olive oil. The only thing you need to be aware of if you're using it that you don't heat it too much, because if it is heated too much, it will become toxic and it will be damaging in your body. So in goes about one and a half, two uh, tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. There's my nicely cut up onion. So that goes in first. And then I have my garlic. And I've used, as I said before, two cloves. And of course, Tricia, you can use your easy garlic. But an advantage of that is, of course, if you do that, is that your hands don't smell either. So I'm turning this onto a low heat. And it's, it's going to cook for about uh, five minutes or so. And while that is cooking, I'm going to cut up my, uh, my pepper. Now, an interesting fact. Do you know anything about a pepper and why it is good for you, Tricia? Um, no, I do know that um, it's part of the sort of Mediterranean diet. So peppers are very prolific in France when I go there in the summer. Um, yeah. And I also know that, um, you know, it's this whole thing about getting colour into your food so that you eat a, a, a wide range of colours. And obviously peppers are a really good way to add colour. Exactly, exactly. Well, while, while we're chatting about the pepper, I'll tell you something that uh, maybe a lot of people don't know, but if you eat uh, a red pepper, one a day raw, that gives you all the vitamin C that is recommended for your daily allowance. So there's a lot of vitamin C in a red pepper. And that's why I also, I thought it was a good choice to do this recipe again. Vitamin C boosts your immune system together with other vitamins. So that's why I thought it would be very good to include it in this soup. I didn't know if you knew this, if you had heard this before. No, but that, I mean, that's really good information. Um, we had a conversation last Tuesday with a guy called Dr. Max Gowland. And I, you know, I am a, a skeptic when it comes to um, supplements. And uh, I know quite a lot of people quite like the idea of um, quite strong doses of extra vitamin C supplements mm -hmm. uh, because they think it protects against colds and, um, you know, winter, winter illnesses and stuff. But from my point of view, you know, I know that there are quite a few foods that contain good sources of vitamin C, obviously oranges and things like that. But I didn't know that uh, peppers were such a brilliant source. So that's yeah. interesting. Well, I always think, uh, my opinion is that you should get as much vitamins, nutrients, minerals from, from your food. But a lot of people don't, don't know how to do that. You said, for example, at the beginning, uh, the colors of the rainbow Mediterranean diet. That's really important because all the vegetables and fruits and are in different colors of the rainbow have different benefits, health benefits. And I read somewhere that if you want to get all your nutrients and vitamins and minerals out of the foods you eat, you need to eat about 25 different fruits and vegetables a week. That's quite a lot. And I don't think there are many people who do uh, get that amount out of their food. So maybe some people know that they don't get enough vitamin C or don't eat enough fruit then a supplementation would be a really good idea, I think. It just depends on your diet, really. Yeah, yeah, I think that's really interesting. I, I, I think uh, there is a case to be made for supplements, let's put it that way. Um, but it, the, yeah. the, for me, the, the best solution initially anyway is to, is to eat as wide a range of foods as you possibly can. And certainly I don't think most people eat as much plant-based foods as they possibly need to. Um, so, you know, well, the, government, the government recommends we eat about five fruit or vegetables a day, but that's the minimum. Ideally, you should have eight till 10 
fruits or vegetables a day, and then preferably more vegetables than fruits because fruits are high in sugar. But we'll talk about that another time. Okay. Uh, my onions and garlic are uh, now nicely soft. So what I'm going to do next is to put uh, the red peppers in, which I've just uh, cut. So do you want to see that, me do that or not? Yes, let's have a look. Yeah. Okay. Right, so there we are. Um, has often give people see do it. when they um, have some food on a chopping board they often use the sharp side of the knife to put it into the pan well that makes your knife less sharp so what i recommend is that you use the back end of the knife and then just put it in the pan like that So you'll still keep your sharp knife. <laughs> Good tip. A, a bit of a stir. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. And what I'm going to do next might surprise you. I talked to you at the beginning about uh, the stock tube. I've used a vegetable stock tube, just one, which I've made very fine. Now, I've done that because um, I need to mix it with water. Now, a lot of people put this in the water and then put it in the pan. And in order to save washing up, I put the water in the pan first. And then I put in my stock cube. That means that I only need to dry the jar. So it saves washing up with a tea, clean tea towel. So that's a little tip that I uh, give you. And uh, I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit now and give this a bit of a stir. Uh, this will need to cook for about five minutes. Uh, and I've got a lid, so I'm going to put that on the top. Turn it down in a minute. Uh, I'm showing you how to cut uh, the cauliflower. All right, okay. There's the cauliflower. Now I'll take the salt and pepper away because I always use the salt and pepper at the end, not, not while it's, uh, not the pepper. The salt I always put in at the end because we were earlier on talking about the benefits of Himalayan salt. If you put it already in the food, it will already lose one of its benefits. So I'm putting that in late. So next is the cauliflower. As I said, I've used a small one here. Um, many people, I'll just take off the head, the flower head. It's a cruciferous vegetable. It's a very difficult word to pronounce for um, a Dutch person, cruciferous. Can you say the word? I find it really difficult. It's, I, I, find that re I find that really amusing. So the, the word that I get my French friends to say is squirrel, okay? So squirrel, they can't say it. They go squirrel like that. Really? Yeah, it's because the, I think the French for squirrel is something like écurie, which I find quite difficult to say. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's it, there are various words that you can give um, people who are not English speak, but, you know, first English speakers um, to say, which is quite amusing. So how do you say cruci cruciferous? Cruci well, I, I, I'm cruciferous. I don't know if it's right. right. I, when I hear you say it, I know how to say it. But if I read it, I find it really difficult. I... Um, I know that, for example, during the Second World War, uh, we had a lot of Germans and, and English people in Holland. And to detect if they were really Dutch, to check them, they asked them to use the word, say the word Scheveningen. And that's probably something very similar, which English people find really difficult to say. My husband can do it, but uh, it took a lot of time. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Right, okay, so on to the cauliflower. Um, I'm just going to cut it up in little uh, chunks. Now, a lot of people throw this on the compost heap. Do you? Um, I don't have a compost heap. Um, <laughs> or in the bin, or in the recycle bin, or the compost I'm, I'm bin. I'm sorry, I'm going to hold my hand up and say that uh, I absolutely don't have anything as, uh, as uh, sophisticated as a compost heap. No, but what would you do with the green leaves of a cauliflower if you have it? Um, uh, throw them away. Yeah. Now, that is such a waste. Um, I, want, I find we should try to use as much of the vegetables that we have. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the leaves of a cauliflower because you can cut them up very finely, uh, can put them in the soup if you want to, but you can also stir fry them. And why do I say that? Because there is actually 
more goodness in the green leaves than there is in the flower heads. So this is full of fiber, iron, potassium, and most of all calcium, which women in older age need a lot of. So I hope that by showing you this, that uh, I won't throw this away. I will use this in a stir fry tomorrow evening. So I'll cut it up in little bits. I haven't included it in the, in the soup because I only use the cauliflower head because it takes a bit longer to cook. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I'm just going to cut this in a uh, little bit. Um, the only thing I want to say with if you want to use the leaves for the cauliflower, uh, make sure that the cauliflower you buy is uh, organic. Uh, because then you know for sure that it's not being sprayed with uh, pesticides and other things. Good tip. Good tip. Well, people say to me, do you always recommend organic? Um, no, I don't. If organic comes from the other side of the world, I think it's better to... Uh, to buy your fruit and vegetables locally. Um, but if you can get local organic vegetables and fruits from the UK or, well, Europe, hopefully we can still get some from Europe, <laughs> but um, that's another case. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I sort of recommend. Um, we do need to eat more vegetables and fruit in this country uh, because I believe there's only 50% of the population that eats the minimum amount of fruit and vegetables, so that's very low. Yes, there's uh, quite a way to go, I think. With um, uh, it's, it's about education, isn't it? It's public it education. Is, yeah. uh, and it's, it's also a lot about what happens in schools, you know. Uh, that's right, that's yeah. right. Right, okay, so on we go. Now the peppers have cooked for a while. So I'm going to turn you around again and show you uh, what the soup is like now. While we have been chatting. Can you see it? Yes, I can, yeah. I can. Okay, yeah. so the peppers are now nice and soft and then finally I'm going to add uh, the cauliflower. I'll do that with my hand, not with the knife. <laughs> right. Okay. And get that mixed here. Give it again a good stir. And now, if I don't, as you see, I have not put any herbs or spices in it, but if you want to, you can. Um, I like it a bit plain because it, if I keep it plain, I can use it for other uh, recipes. So I can put meatballs in, I can put curry in, I could put chicken in. And this is going to cook uh, for about uh, seven minutes. So um, in order for you not to hold on, I've made some before. And this is then the end result. It doesn't look as colorful, but there's still everything in there. So that's the soup. And then I suggest you add uh, some Himalayan salt and some pepper. And by all means, you can be really creative with soups. You can put in any herb or spices that you like. So, um, this is, being, this is the same as what the one that I did, but it's just been cooked for uh, for seven minutes longer, so it's nice and soft. Just to show you what it looks like in a plate. I must say, I was a bit generous with this soup with my cauliflower. So there's one way of serving it, which is just like this, on its own as it comes, with uh, a little bit of garnish on it. Get my hands in the fridge so we don't get that. Um, that looks instantly a little bit better, I think, if you put some green on it. Um, so that's one way. The other way you can serve the soup is um, to take a little bit out, take a little bit of the soup out, blend it, and then put it back. So it's sort of halfway, it's not such a farmhouse soup. Or you can blend it completely into a fine, uh, like, consomme soup, which is very appetizing for children because they will want to not know that there are so many vegetables in there. So then they sort of, you can disguise the vegetables. So do you want me to do the blending or not? Um, I think, 
I think it's fine, uh, Lenny. You know, I can imagine that blended. Um, presume is the colour sort of slightly pinky red when you've blended it? Uh, it's more, um, yeah, pinky, pinky, light pink. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I, I think my preference would probably be to blend it. Um, strangely enough, I quite like smooth soups. Um, so uh, it, it's just a personal preference. But um, I'll make it for you, Tricia. It's not a problem. You can do it here, here, now and then. I've got the blender at hand, so it makes a little bit of noise. But uh, let me show you. Okay. Then you can see immediately what the color of the soup will be. It's more red. There we are. Okay, lovely. Now you can see it better. Look. Yeah. yeah. Yes, that looks nice. Uh, that, yeah. To me, that you don't know that there's cauliflower or red pepper in it. That's maybe an advantage or maybe a disadvantage. Otherwise, it just looks like like this, really. So that's a normal soup. We'll be yeah. eating soup for a while in the next couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, of course, when you have soup, it would be nice to have something with it. Um, we discussed it and you said you liked crackers because you don't eat any more bread and um, could you tell me why you're not wanting to eat bread? Is there a specific reason or? There's a very good reason Lenny. Um, I had terrible problems with my skin, uh, really really bad. Uh, you know it would come up in lumps, painful lumps and I was at my wits end to be honest mm. with you. About three years ago I decided to do a sort of an exclusion diet and uh, really come to grips with what what I was eating because I you know I knew that my skincare was good and I knew that what I was doing uh, to my skin was was healthy but I so I thought it must come from within and um, I cut out almost all the sugar that I was eating and uh, I still had I still had problems with lumps and bumps and things and then I cut out bread and the difference was incredible. And I find now I don't eat any bread. If I go to France and I get really, really tempted in a boulangerie with a, you know, a baguette or something, it just looks so crusty and delicious. I will take it home and maybe have, you know, a lump of it like you do with French bread. And I can swear to you that within a day or two, my face will erupt into lumps and bumps. I am really, really sensitive to whatever it is that is in bread that my body doesn't like, whether it's gluten or it's, uh, it, you know, some other aspect of the bread. But um, since I gave up bread, uh, my skin has just been remarkable. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I know not to eat it. Sometimes get te tempted in a good restaurant where they bring around a bread basket and they say, well, that's the olive bread, you know, that's the walnut bread or whatever. You think, oh, yes, I'll have, a, I'll have a little bit of that. And it's fatal. I know the feeling. I'm the same. I, I cut out bread uh, now 12 years ago, well, nearly 13 years ago. Um, and for me, it was not the skin, but it was my energy levels. Um, I'm a baker's daughter. And we'll talk more about that on the 16th of February. But so I grew up with bread, grew up with milk <laughs> and a very uh, Northern European diet. But once I start, well, since I started to eat bread, I feel more energetic. And it's because gluten can interfere very badly with your gut. And it's very important to improve your gut health. So um, that's why I've made some crackers today uh, that are uh, gluten free and are so easy to make. They're just basically made up out of seeds. And um, once you've made them, they should uh, look like this. And the ingredients of it are um, very simple. I've used uh, chia seed, 100 grams of chia seed. I've used uh, linseed, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that just in a minute, just briefly. Then pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds and sesame seeds. So I've used five different seeds, which I've mixed in water, about 200 milligrams of water. You let it stand for about five to 10 minutes and it becomes a thick paste. And then you spread it out over a baking tray, which you first cover with a baking parchment and then the mixture on the top. The baking tray should be about 28 by 37 centimeters, but I'll, I'll put the details in the recipe. Spread it out with the back of a spoon, 
goes in the oven 15 minutes on one side and 15 minutes on the other side. And you have a delicious cracker, which is full of good fats because they're all fats from nuts, from seeds and keeps you full for longer, full of protein as well. So much better than a cracker that you would buy in the supermarket, which still sometimes has gluten in it. Well, most of the time it has. So then they turn out these, these lovely little, uh, little crackers. I just showed them to the... Uh, they look fantastic. Yeah. Uh, tell me where you buy your seeds. Um, I buy my seeds online because I, I use them a lot. So I buy them in bulk. So I buy packs of 500 grams uh, or a kilo or sometimes two kilos. I use a lot of, um, uh, of course, limb seeds. That's, that's what I've used a lot of. And also here is a, a wonderful shop where I live very close by where they don't use packaging. So they have these big machines and you can just help yourself and they weigh it to bring your own containers, which I like, I really like. So do you buy your seeds from all from the same place online? Yeah, from the same same place uh, online and sometimes here in the local shop. Okay, so can you um, give us the link to that uh, yeah. place you buy your seeds? It's just that uh, anybody watching this who feels that they they find it hard to source things like that and we and are really interested. Those crackers look amazing, and I'm going. I'm definitely going to have a go at those. Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you next week how I get on. That would be lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I've never made anything like that, and I eat quite a lot of rye vita. So when I'm when I'm having my soup at lunchtime, I often eat soup at lunchtime. I will eat that with a couple of rye vitas with some butter on, and um, I quite I, I like them. They're rye 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 based rye vitas. Um, they are the best cracker you can get, in my opinion, if you don't make these. So that's still a very good choice. And um, yeah, it's, if people are not gluten intolerant and they're happy to have that, that's fine. But if you want to have something that's more healthy, more nutritious, and also makes you feel fuller for longer, then these crackers might be really helpful. Yeah, I, what I like about that is that um, I know that seeds have a really interesting part to play in a good diet and, mm -hmm. and that they do contain micronutrients and so on and so forth that are important. I sprinkle pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds and things on top of my breakfast. Mm -hmm. uh, I eat quite a lot of fruit at breakfast with your uh, high fat yogurt, yogurt you know, Greek yeah. yogurt. And yeah. um, so that's one way, but I would love to make those crackers. They look delicious and um, yeah. I'm sure they taste wonderful, but- They are very tasty. And I have a friend who came here and she said, and I was making them, she said, I didn't know it was so simple to make crackers. And once you've made them, you just store them in the fridge for about seven till 10 days. They'll be absolutely fine. They might go a little bit soft, but you can put them just in the toaster or if you have the oven on, put them in the oven. I wouldn't turn the oven on. <laughs> and my friend actually, she puts hers sometimes in the microwave. I've not done that before, but I have toasted them to make them nice and crispy again. And the main ingredient of these crackers are linseeds. I don't know if you are familiar with linseeds. You have linseeds which are beige and you have linseeds that are brown. With linseeds, if you just eat them on their own and not, not grind them, they just go through the system and they come out at the other end. It's important that you grind them so that you either buy flax seeds, which is linseed that is grounded, or you do it yourself. So I have a little coffee grinder and every day I have three tablespoons and I put three tablespoons in and I eat it straight away. Sometimes I make a quantity and then I put it in an airtight container in the fridge and then it lasts for about a week because if you don't eat it straight away, it oxidates. So then it could be not all the goodness is out of it, which is such a shame. So can you buy the flax? Uh, yeah, in the supermarket, uh, most big supermarkets have it, uh, most health food stores have it, but you can also buy that from that organization that I buy my seeds right. and Okay, yeah. uh, that's what I'll do. I'll buy it online. I haven't got a coffee grinder. I've got one of those stick um, liquidizers and nothing else. I don't have a, a food yeah. processor or anything, so I'm terribly ill-equipped. Um, but it's good because, um, like I said... Oh, Tricia, I have to make a confession. I only bought the coffee grinder to do this, to, to do <laughs> my seeds, not to grind my coffee. And it was very cheap from a certain store and it's paid its way. I've had it for two years, so... Okay, yeah. all right. 
uh, that's, that's, that sounds brilliant. Um, Lenny, that was lovely. I really enjoyed that with you. There, there were lots of, um, you know, they call them hacks, don't they? Hacks, which are shortcuts. Um, and I love that, you know, use the other side Thank of the you. knife, um, don't blunt your knives and all that kind of thing. So um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to many more weeks of learning from you. I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot. Um, believe me, there are big gaps in my knowledge around this. <laughs> You have inspired me this morning. You've certainly inspired me to make those crackers and that soup does look delicious. And I'm also very convinced that the vitamin C content of that mm. soup being so high is mm. really, really valuable at the moment in the um, in the winter time. So uh, that was brilliant. As I said, thank you so much. And um, I shall look forward to seeing you next week. Have you got any thoughts about what we might do next week or not? Well, I thought every, every day we start with breakfast. So maybe a, a breakfast idea. Okay, that's uh, we could do that, or we could do a snack. What I've found in the past with clients and people that contacted me that they found snacking in lockdown really difficult. So let me know what you want. Okay, well, um, you can put your comments underneath the video if you want to, saying uh, whether you would prefer a breakfast idea or a snack idea, or maybe we'd have time for both. Um, yeah. But the thing is that um, we will listen to you and uh, we'll be led by what you would like to find out in this series. So um, thank you, Lenny, for our, being our second spot, uh, uh, actually third bright spot of the week. And uh, that was absolutely lovely. Look forward thank to seeing you. you next week. And um, do you want to just show us your book? You've got, um, have you got Well, it's only recent, recently been published and it's me and my twin sister. <laughs> so uh, we have together, oh, no, it's me actually, but we published this book um, and it is over 108 recipes in there. The recipes of the crackers and of the soup are in here. What's important or what's different from this recipe book is that all recipes are sugar and gluten free and carbohydrate conscious. Um, it's currently on special offer, so I'll send you the link where the ladies can get it if they're interested, because this will really help you to get your body in tip top shape. OK, that's fantastic. Um, we will put the links to that. It's actually just available on your own website. So it's yes. uh, not available yes. from Amazon or any other no. sellers. So no. it's very special. Uh, it's a very it special. Is. It's my uh, baby, my third baby. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's brilliant that you've got it. And, and I think people watching this will love the fact that uh, they can find you. Um, you know, they can have a, have a compilation of your recipe. I'm easily accessible. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So again, thank you so much, Lenny, and see you next week. Okay, thank you very much, Tricia. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye. Bye, bye-bye.